The sixth generation of fighters is a result of the lessons learned from fighters in the past, combined with major advancements in technology. It is an evolution of fighters into the future. The US, Russia, France, Italy, Spain, Japan, the UK, and other world powers are in a race to build the world's best sixth generation fighter. It could be all they need to put them at the top of the food chain. However, while Sweden has had a chance to join at least two of these sixth generation programs, the nation has refused to. In 2019, Sweden signed a Memorandum of Understanding in the UK-led Global Combat Air Program, but then exited the program. This decision to ignore sixth generation fighter programs, at least for now, traces back to one Swedish fourth generation fighter that's simply ahead of its time, the JAS Gripen. With this fighter in service, Sweden is well protected and can therefore choose to not rush into joining either of the two major European-led sixth-generation fighter jet programs ongoing. These two programs include the Future Combat Air System program by France, Germany, and Spain, and the Global Combat Air program by the UK, Italy, and Japan mentioned earlier. Sweden isn't entirely tossing the idea of a sixth-generation fighter aside, though. In fact, Sweden has a mapped out plan on wielding a sixth generation fighter fleet. Between 2023 and 2025 would be a concept exploration phase, while a second phase between 2026 and 2030 would address concept and technology development. By the end of these two phases, Sweden would complete operational analysis, system concepts, and aircraft demonstrators. So for Sweden, its sixth generation fighter effort is still a fact-finding program as opposed to a procurement program. The procurement of the fighter itself would come after these first two phases beyond 2030, close to when other nations would be commissioning their sixth generation fighters into service. To put it simply, while other nations are racing to build their sixth generation fleet, the Gripens of the Swedish Air Force have bought Sweden a lot of time through some powerful generation transcending capabilities. The JAS-39 Gripen is a supersonic multi-role fighter manufactured by the Swedish aerospace and defense company Saab AB. It entered service in 1996, but thanks to ceaseless upgrades from Saab, the almost three-decade-old fighter has become a modern fighter capable of dominating the skies today. The latest version of the fighter, with the most recent and most extensive upgrades, is known as the Gripen E. Built as a dominating metallic bird, the Gripen E's main features are as maxed out as today's technologies allow. The results are the following battle-defining capabilities. Airframe. The Gripen E's airframe is the core of the fighter's supermaneuverability, which is amplified by canard control surfaces and a delta wing that contributes a positive lift force at all speeds and counters induced drag. The Gripen E is designed to be unstable to enable it to almost break the laws of physics by flying at 70 to 80 degree angles of attack. To compensate for this intentional instability, the aircraft is fitted with fly-by-wire controls which enables a more dynamic system-based balancing as the aircraft pushes through the air. Engine The single General Electric F4 14G engine of the Gripen E produces over 22,000 pounds of thrust. This thrust combined with full authority digital engine control pushes the fighter to a top speed of Mach 2 with super cruise abilities. Keeping the jet, with all its combat cargo, flying faster than the speed of sound without the use of afterburners. And thanks to the modular nature of the Gripen E that prevents the rippling effect of failures across major systems, the aircraft boasts one of the most reliable power plants in the world, accumulating, by 2010, over 143,000 flight hours without a single engine-related failure. Cockpit. The cockpit of the Gripen E is designed as an extension of the pilot's mind and body via an absolute human-machine collaboration that is facilitated by a hands-on throttle and stick control principle. Here, a centrally mounted stick connected to a digital triplex fly-by-wire system does the bulk of the work, from flying the aircraft to controlling the cockpit weapon systems and the wide area display. 
This display, backed by a helmet-mounted display system, provides pilots, through intelligent information management, with all necessary mission information in an intuitive interface. The result is a high level of situational awareness and the ability to work in perfect coordination with tactical units on the ground, on the seas, or in space. Weapons Payload The Gripen E, equipped with up to 10 hardpoints, can carry an impressive 14,000 pounds payload of various armaments, such as the GBU laser-guided bomb, short-range Iris T missile, long-range beyond visual range MBDA Meteor and AIM-9, Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles, the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missiles, RBS-15 anti-ship missiles, and more. These weapons work together to ensure the fighter is survivable and has the advantage in combat against any target, whether it be another fighter in the sky, a tank on the ground, a ship at sea, or a superhero trying to make a name for himself. Air forces that purchase the Gripen E have the choice to purchase their weapons from any manufacturer that piques their interest, while being rest assured that the Gripen E is more than capable of wielding them thanks to a lightweight and sturdy airframe. The Gripen E is further armed with an electronic warfare suite that consists of a 360-degree spherical missile approach, warning system that is capable of actively jamming radar, or working in an undetectable passive mode depending on how much stealth is in demand for the mission. And all of these are still not all. As new technologies continue to take shape, the Gripen E could be further upgraded to wield them. This is the perk of a dynamic, adaptive, and evolving system. As a result, the Gripen, which was built in the 1990s as a fourth-generation fighter, has evolved to rival stealthy fifth-generation fighters by becoming stealthy itself, and is evolving even further to protect Sweden effectively without the nation building a sixth-generation fighter. All of these evolutions of this fighter have turned it into quite a beast in the skies, one that is almost impossible to defeat in a dogfight. Across its many years in service in Sweden, Brazil, South Africa, and Hungary, the Gripen has been put up against a number of fierce rivals. Today, it is sixth-generation fighters. Yesterday, it was the fifth-generation F-35 Lightning II fighter. And before that, it was the F-16 Fighting Falcon and then others. In all of these rivalries, the Gripen has impressively held its own and stood its ground, figuratively and in actual dogfights. The Red Flag is a two-week advanced aerial combat training exercise held several times a year by the United States Air Force. It offers realistic air combat training for military pilots of the U.S. and its allies. It is one of the most intense of such exercises. In the Red Flag 2006 series, the first time the Gripen took part in the exercise, a star was born. In the face of the reduced airborne early warning and control and reduced ground control inherent to the exercise, the performing Gripens connected their link systems and performed these roles for one another. This gave every Gripen the necessary battlefield awareness and helped them avoid all ground defense. The result? 10 kills for the Gripens on the first day, including a typhoon. By the end of the exercise, not a single Gripen was lost to any aerial encounter nor did they fail to meet their mission objectives. In fact, a single Gripen was able to knock down five F-16s during close air combat, the first sign that the Gripen probably needed a bigger challenge. During another combat exercise with the Royal Norwegian Air Force, three Swedish Gripens went up against five F-16s of the Royal Norwegian Air Force in three rounds of combat. In every round, all five F-15s were shot down while only one Gripen was knocked out, and that was in the third round. During Loyal Arrow in Sweden, the Gripen went up against the F-15, a senior brother to the F-16. Three F-15s of the U.S. Air Force were intercepted by a Gripen acting as an aggressor. The result was two F-15s shot down and one managed to escape. In the F-1 Fane's defense, though, they were in the Gripen's backyard. Despite the Gripen's agility and invincibility in the skies, the fighter still manages to be one of the most available fighters in the world. Once the fighter lands for refueling or rearming, it is almost always ready to take off back into the skies, while many other fighters need to delay for re-evaluations or wait for unfavorable weather to pass. 
With all of these capabilities perfected on the Gripen, Saab is heavy on exporting the Gripen to air forces looking to dominate the skies in an export market currently dominated by the F-35. To win over customers, the Gripen must make a statement. And its chance to do so finally came, as Ukraine calls, for fighters to repel the Russian invasion. Now, the question for the Gripen is, what next? Ukraine is in the middle of the largest war in probably the country's history. Fighter jets have been a constant request. These requests have focused on the F-16 but are open to the Gripen. More directly, Ukraine requested an operational evaluation of the Swedish fighter. In response, the Swedish government has formally announced plans to provide training to pilots and ground personnel from Ukraine on the operation and maintenance of Gripen fighters. But with the release of the new Tucker Carlson interview of Putin explaining Russia's side of the war, these plans could change heavily. Sweden doesn't exactly have a history of picking sides. One reason to not pick a side could be enough to not do so, and the Gripens, helpful as they would be for Ukraine, could stay grounded. The JAS-39. Gripen, a fourth-generation, fifth-generation, and now sixth-generation rival, continues to be in the news for all the right reasons.